What is up, guys? Welcome back to Punk Rock Radar. And today we are bringing you our favorite non-punk album. So now this is non-punk radar. And we've got the whole crew here to talk about it. So we're going to go through and kind of talk about uh, just records that we really like that are not Pennywise, Bad Religion, Blink-182, and Green Day. And so if, if, there is such a, if there's such a thing as music outside of the bounds of that uh, those four bands, I'm not sure there is, but... We're going to check it out and figure out uh, what else all of us listen to. So we've got uh, next to me, of course, owner of the channel himself, Mr. Punk Rock Radar, John, is here. And then below me, we have Screeching Bottle Rocket, a.k.a. Dylan from DyingScene.com. And next to him, we've got uh, the man, the myth, the Hudson Valley hardcore <laughs> legend, the man who almost made us late. And we did make us late for this video. We've got Lewis. So, guys, uh, what was uh, your thought process going into picking these records? And just like, uh, I guess, like, uh, you guys ready to get into this and everything yeah. like that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Cool, cool. Um, My thought process, I just picked the five things that I couldn't classify as punk that I've ever listened to. So there you go. Yeah, I was just wondering how adjacent... Do we did we want to go? Or are you trying to avoid anything even like kind of punk? I tried my best. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I went along the lines of like when I have guests in my car that may be not inclined to <laughs> like the music that I like, what's a record that I could put on that I would put on a car ride that we could all agree on? So that's usually how I approach <clears> these. But these are just albums I just love in general. So hell yeah. So, well, when, so when normal people are around, yeah. Like, yeah, hey, check this thing. You're not like, you don't put on mediocre generica. <laughs> right. Yeah. When the normies get in, we're not listening to, uh, we're not listening to, uh, constructs of the state on repeat. So yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta keep it going. So I think you're going first, right? Ellie? Yeah. 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 Just say to shoot the kids at school. Holy shit, dude. What are you listening to? <laughs> Shut up, Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to this song about eating out of dumpsters and shooting heroin. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into my first record here. And uh, speaking of avid drug users, my first record here is going to be Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. So not only was this like one of my first kind of like records that I really got into that was outside of the Christian rock uh, uh, meta of my childhood, it was Johnny Cash. Um, I remember hearing ring of fire i think on tony Hawk underground 2 and i think it was the first time i heard johnny cash and then i found out my grandfather who i i was learning to play guitar he played guitar as well and always to just show me like christian hymns and old stuff like that but he liked johnny cash it was a way to bond over music that wasn't really boring church hymns and uh i think this is like a fantastic live record um uh it's, it's one of the best i mean it feels like to a degree, like it could be like a little bit uh, forced with the whole Folsom prison aspect like that. But, he, you know, he actually went there and I, I feel like this record feels very genuine, like it doesn't feel like a studio plant or anything like that. So I know some people think it kind of is, but I love this record. And that's uh, that's what I have to go. Any, any thoughts on Johnny Cash, <laughs> guys? I mean, oh. the original, the original guy in black, right? I mean, I mean, who doesn't like a Johnny Cash song or two? So and, uh, we got yeah. Folsom and, Prison Blues, Cocaine Blues about shooting your wife and uh, going yeah. to jail for it. You know, a great song. I mean, it's an awesome live record. But I don't know if you guys even like. I know John despises Johnny yeah. Cash. <laughs> uh, I like <laughs> I like some Johnny Cash. So, uh, but yeah, I mean. This uh, this is also this live album recording was uh, reenacted in Walk the Line, isn't it? So in the yeah, movie, yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. what it is. So there it you go. Was. So so go watch Joaquin Phoenix perform these songs that were performed live previously in the fifties or sixties. It times. was a great. It's a great movie. So, but uh, yeah, good. <laughs> John, yeah. what's your first non-punk album real, here? You got for us real quick though. Like the reason uh, I, I told Elliot this morning. So and Lewis, you may remember, but. Um, one of our first jobs was at Eckerd, you know, before it turned to Rite Aid and Eckerd radio consisted of like 15 to 20 songs. And the, I've been everywhere was one of those songs. 
Oh yeah, it was. I always yeah, hated and, uh, that song. It, it made me, it made me like despise it even more. Cause like I, I worked there for a very long time, so I, I, involuntarily learned the lyrics to that song, which is extremely obnoxious. <clears throat> Remember <laughs> Blondie? Blondie was on the right radio all the yeah. time too. The tide is turning. That song. Oh, oh yeah, my God. God. that one's been stuck in my head for years. Yeah, sorry, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Eckerd turned to into Walgreens down here, but I do uh, down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they split it up. Very relevant topic of conversation. I know. All right. Well, John, what's your first record here? All right. As you guys all know, I have a very sophisticated taste in music. Um, we know. I, we know. I rarely <clears throat> just listen to punk, so my first pick is uh, gonna be Power Man Five Thousand tonight. The Stars Revolt. And uh, I, I don't know if I even considered this, like, one of my favorite records when it came out. But, like, I still, like, pop this on from time to time. Like, pretty much my list are, like, albums that I really connected with at some point, mostly in the 90s. I think all mine are 90s records. But, like, I was even listening to this this morning to kind of prep. And, like, nobody's real. They know who you are. Like, there's some, like, badass tracks on here. I, I feel like it does have a little bit of punk feel to it. But uh, yeah, I I was obviously joking about being sophisticated. I really don't listen to anything else. But uh, I think this is a fun album. It was fun back then, and it's it's fun now. Power Man Five Thousand tonight. The Stars Revolt. Dude, Worlds it's, Collide's a banger. Yeah, Can't yeah Worlds that. Collide is awesome. And uh, Supernova goes. Uh, is it Boom or Pop? Pop. What does it say? It goes Pop. Yeah. Is awesome. I used to. This is uh, this is Rob Zombie's brother. Correct? Yeah, is Spider that one? Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, it's actually better than any Rob Zombie oh, yeah. record. Yeah. <laughs> Not better than White Zombie. I think that White Zombie record's a little better, but this this is better, I think, than what was Rob Zombie's Hell album, Billy his Deluxe. first one. Oh, yeah, Hellbilly Deluxe. I like this more than well, Hellbilly Deluxe. That's a pretty fun record, too, though, to be yeah. honest. No, it, it's but... good. Like, I like Hellbilly Deluxe. I'm just saying, I think I think yeah. I like this one a little more. So, good pick. Um Dylan, are you a Power Man, Power Man 5000 fan, or are you just a Powerball fan? He's a Power Man in general. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no comment on anything that was just mentioned. Um, All right. <laughs> well, Lewis, what's your... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Are we going in a circle, cl- clockwise? Yeah, we're going down to Lewis, oh. then to you. Okay, all right. Sorry. Yeah. Did you just say cockwise uh let's lock <laughs> what's your prison all right J- john go ahead i think i have it in the order here but for my first record is going to be Everclear. so much for the afterglow first band i ever saw in concert at marist college in poughkeepsie new york um I don't really know. I think this, uh, what to say, I still love this record. I think Everclear is a pretty decent band, at least most of their records. Some of the later stuff kind of sucks. But um, this album is everywhere. Father of Mine was like a huge hit when we were kids. I think it was on TRL forever. It was the album that made every boy wish they had a troubled relationship with their father. But it was <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, I mean, this this whole album, uh, like these track lists, like I think it spawned like five or six singles, right? Like, so it was all over the place. Really great. Father of Mine obviously um, was the biggest hit, but obviously they also put out, uh, I think Everything to Everyone came out. Uh, they had uh, Bayou and New Life definitely came out. I think One Hit Wonder, like even the B side of this album is pretty good. I mean, you have to be in the right mindset to be in an Everclear mode, but God, this record was good. Um, and I really thought the albums after this were a really disappointment. So uh, it's going to be there. This used to be my favorite band. So uh, sad to say so. But uh, it is what it is. We all make mistakes, but this album still rules. So you guys have any thoughts about so much for the afterglow? Well, I've definitely been in a certain mindset for Everclear. It usually ends it really, really badly. Uh, but I've actually <laughs> never listened to the band. <laughs> so I, yeah. I have no comment. I, I know they're huge. I've probably heard songs, but I've never listened to Everclear. So I'm going to have to check them out. I've heard about them for many, many years. But Four Years Strong <clears throat> does a banging cover of the title track, too. Which Oh, do they? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that one's really good. So much for the afterglow is a good song, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> What came first, the beverage or the band? I'm assuming the beverage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure. After Everclear. <laughs> okay, I really like the father of mine or whatever the fuck he said the song was called. Is Santa Monica um, on this one or no? 
Yeah. No, that's on Sparkle and Fade. Oh, okay. Oh, no. oh, no. Okay. I was looking at the track list. I couldn't. I couldn't remember any. I, none of these like stick out as songs I've heard. So I'm gonna have to check them out. You've you've definitely heard Father of Mine. Yeah. Like you'll, I, I, you'll I, I on, guarantee yeah. you, I've heard some of these songs on like you know nothing but rock radio. But um, I guess uh, Dylan, go ahead and uh, what's your number one pick here? Uh, can you rev- can you reveal? It should be yeah, Megadeth, uh, Rust in Peace. I uh, I knew I wanted to pick a Megadeth record, but uh, it was hard to decide which because I have a few favorites. But uh, ultimately, Rust in Peace or so- yeah, Rust in Peace prevailed. Um, it's got Holy Wars, Hangar Eighteen, Tornado of Souls, and then uh, Rust in Peace dot dot dot. I believe that's called an ellipsis. Polaris, um, yeah, uh, Megadeth is like uh, obviously they're a thrash band, but there's a lot of nuance to this album, um, and uh, they're my favorite thrash metal band. Yeah, I used to be such a big Megadeth fan. Tornado of Souls is on here, which is I'm pretty sure, right? Tornado of Souls, yeah, which is like one of the best like opening riffs of a song ever. So I used to be. A big Megadeth fanboy when I was in like my guitar nerd phase. So, but I, mean, I, I like love Dave Death. Mustaine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I was never a huge fan, but one anecdote about them. I don't think it was the one you were at, John, but I was at the Montebello Rock Fest in Canada, and we were watching Tenacious D play, and they were going, they were going long, and apparently Megadeth had just had enough. They were at the other main stage. And they literally just started, and it was the loudest thing I'd ever heard. And Tenacious D was like in the middle of a song, and they were like, "Well, I guess Megadeth has started. Goodbye, everybody." And that was just the end of the performance. So that I just, I just think that's really funny. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I was never a big, never really that big into them, but you know, obviously, technically impressive, pretty cool. So no complaints. Lots of guitar solos. So almost, I think, eighty percent of the album. <laughs> it's good though but uh john anything to say on megadeth or uh should i, I go with number two yeah here? i've really only heard countdown to extinction i don't know like i've probably dabbled in this a little bit but i don't have too much to say like megadeth is fine i think they're a good band all right fine a good band yeah uh let's go to uh my number two here which my number two is going to be uh what is it here oh yes the roots do you want more Uh, So the Roots, you may know them as uh, currently the backing band for uh, Late Night with uh, Jimmy Fallon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, So but they are a a jazz rap hip hop group uh, from Philadelphia. Uh, And this record is if if you like 90s hip hop at all, if you like kind of that boom bap era, this is like one of the best ones. It's these super cool jazz instrumentals with uh black thought and quest love just spitting back and forth over them like mellow my man is like a super fun song uh do you want more the title track is good proceed um so it's just like a classic 90s hip-hop album with like these uh jazz instruments which i don't think were sampled i think they did them all so it's just like these really cool jazz instrumentals with these two dudes just like spitting back and forth over it and uh i think it's one of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time it's really i went through like the slight i I won't it's never a phase like it's always the punk phase never ended i'll just go on side quest a lot of the times throughout (laughs) my use and this was in my 90s hip-hop side quest where i was just like let me just check out a bunch of 90s hip-hop and some of it's really fucking awesome and this is one of the ones i think is the best so well, uh, what do you guys think? Never Any opinion on the roots? Never Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I'm vaguely familiar. I mean, I know what Questlove is, and I've heard some of his drumming stuff. Like, it's cool. Like, it's just, it was never really my thing, but I, I have mm-hmm. no doubt that it's probably pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely check it out. I don't know if you like any rap or hip-hop, Lewis, but... A bit. Uh, the, you and Matt would probably be getting along right now, I think. Matt, Matt, Matt loved his side quest as well, John. I remember that was a very Matt thing to go on side quest. There was hip hop Matt for a while. There was hipster yeah. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and Matt looked like we had the same thing. It was, it was always punk, but it was just randomly like, oh, I'm just going to listen to this genre a bunch. Just check it out. Just dive into it. That was like after high school. High school, it was like all punk. I was like nothing else. But um, I guess, John, what's your number two here? All right, so I knew I was picking this band. There was like a maybe a couple months uh, in the eighth grade or ninth grade where this was my favorite band. At first, I had Science, but like I listened to both of them, and I ended up with uh, Make Yourself. 
uh, by Incubus. I feel it. Like, I feel like this band's kind of goofy now. I feel like when people think of them, they don't go back to like the '90s Incubus, but they had some like ridiculously good records. Like I think Science still kicks ass. Over like front to back, I probably like Science a little more, but the standouts on Make Yourself like Privilege, the title track, uh, like the first five, like Nowhere Fast, Consequence, are all really good. Then you've got like some singles like Drive Clean, I Miss You. This is just like a, it's like a badass record, and I think before this came out, I think Make Yourself was released possibly as acoustic or something. So I remember being stoked for this record. Uh, I I don't know, dude. I feel like a lot of people don't like Incubus anymore, but I still think this record kicks ass. Like Lewis, I know you liked this back in the day too, right? And this album rips. I mean, yeah, Drive is a sick song, man. I mean, this whole album's really good. I mean, it's definitely captures the time. I mean, uh this this whole vibe was just like the coolest shit ever yeah. i know it's it's kind of fallen off now i think but yeah i'm i have no complaints about this love the loving some incubus i would always get incubus uh chevelle and deftones mixed up <laughs> i never could yeah, remember they, who was who they sound, not that i think they sound, they sound the same no. not yeah. they sound the same just all their album art looked the same and all their names for some reason were very similar in in like style to me so i would always be like is this chevelle which is incubus the one that sounds like this i can never remember i've never actually listened to incubus but i have listened to chevelle never listened to the deftones either Dude, so Chevelle's listen, the listen to science first it's it's probably okay, like just, it's way heavier this is definitely more like it's just new metal right just new metal that's no. what incubus is right no? This, this one's it's not like it's not new metal, metal at all it's like alternative oh, okay. rock with some like oh, some okay, dj okay. it has a dj but like it's faintly in the background it's not front and center okay, i know the songs seem familiar i'll check them out though yeah. oh pardon you'll know you'll know pardon me that's that was a really big song yeah, okay. part, oh, part, that's what i meant to talk about pardon me yeah that's like with yeah, pardon me was, edge. it's yeah. really good what's up oh yeah okay uh lewis so what's your number two pick here uh, so for my number two, I'm kind of staying in the genre, but it was released, I think, on Anti, uh, so which was the alternative side of Epitaph. But my second pick should be the Weaker Than's Reconstruction Site. Yeah. OK, so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. This record just kind of always held like a soft spot for me. I got this one when it came out. Um, I was I always I, I love propaganda everyone I've mentioned that like a million times in this channel and uh, you know I think the band got infinitely better when John Sampson left just because he just wasn't like a great fit for the style but I kind of liked his contributions to the band so I was like well I'm kind of interested to see what else he's doing um, I wasn't a huge fan of the first two weaker than's records I think they're okay like fallow and left and leaving they're okay uh, but I really think Reconstruction Straight is is really, really strong. Um, it's it's the perfect background record, like just for like a, a dark drive through the suburbs. I don't really know how to phrase it otherwise, but this album really s stuck with me. Um, it's got all the quirkiness to it, quirky lyrics. Um, obviously, his voice is something you have to get used to, but if you're if you're digging that and that's that's okay with you i think it's all right but the, uh yeah i mean i don't really have much to say besides it just rules looking at the list here the reasons like the first three tracks reasons reconstruction straight psalm for elk's lodge last call is amazing uh plea from a cat called virtue i like all of these songs hospital vespers is like they got some more of the experimental stuff on here um yeah, so I don't really know. I just I love this record. It's uh we're gonna have like kind of a, a bent towards indie rock now for my picks, but this was the first one. So guys, any thoughts on the weaker dance? I checked it out a couple months ago, I think, because uh I saw people talking about it in the Discord. They love I love this record. I think it's great. I think it's a great vibe. So I love I love the the, the early two thousands indie rock stuff like even like the early shins and stuff like that like at a time and place there's like a great time to like listen to stuff like this it's not always yeah. what i go towards but I, I liked it a lot i think a plea from a cat named virtue and uncorrected proofs were my two stars oh, to go into here. so uh john anything on the weaker thans or or dylan uh, I can't, john definitely hates yeah, the weaker thans i yeah. can't get past the vocals yeah i was just hoping we get a <laughs> we get a dylan uh anchorless uh singing <laughs> but yeah it's not for me Anchorless. <laughs> I can't. I can't stand the guy's voice. It's so mousy, and it's and it's weird. Like I always forget that the frontman's name, Chris Hanna. Is that propaganda. it? Right? Yeah, that's on propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So like I couldn't think of any polar more polar opposite than he has like this like barking like really you know, just very like masculine voice and then the other guy had this it was like he was just, like that anchorless song is like shoehorned in there so hard it's like okay Chris you can have your song you know it's just like so out of place um yeah. oh my god the cat moved the computer sorry <laughs> <laughs> but, well, oh my god again. Stop it. <laughs> Dylan, what's your uh, what's your number two here, Dylan? Uh Billy Joel, Glass Houses. Nice. Um I like Power Pop, and this is probably the most like power pop-ish Billy Joel record. Uh you got Sometimes a Fantasy, uh All for Lena, Sleeping with the Television on, and then of course uh Still Rock and Roll to Me, which is uh an all-time contrived rock and roll classic. Um, but yeah, I really like this record. And uh, shout out, if you like this era of Billy Joel, check out uh, Kurt Baker is a more contemporary uh, artist who uh, releases music similar to this. You may be right, you didn't mention, right? That one's a bad Yeah, You May Be Right's also a great opening track. I, like, I think we had this argument. Oh, sorry. I think we had this argument. I would have said if you were going to pick a Billy Joel record, it should just be Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2 because it is just <laughs> walls packed to the gills with banger after banger, but it is kind of like cheating. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, sorry, Elliot. Songs no. from the Attic is a, is a yeah. good record, too, the live record. I know the hits and stuff. I don't think I've ever sat down and listened to a full Billy Joel record. So, I mean, I'll check out Glass Houses. So, seems cool. Yeah, Billy Joel kicks ass. Of everyone's picks, aside from mine, that's the best one so far, I think. In my opinion. <laughs> in my, in my unsurprisingly. Opinion. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll go to my third pick here, if you guys are ready for this. You ready for this? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my third pick here is going to be Idea and Abilities by the Throat. So uh, I'll, I'll give a quick little yeah. context here. Idea is a scrawny uh, white kid who got really into hip-hop in the 90s. And he decided to go on and win two of, I think, the first like freestyle battle rap competitions, Scribble Jam and Blaze Battle in like 99. And from there, he started doing stuff with Rhyme Sayers as a connection to Epitaph. And he even has a few songs and some Punkarama, I believe. The idea, the rapper abilities is his DJ and his record by the throat is his best record by far it's his most experimental it's basically experimental rap rock like very like abstract in a lot of ways like heavy distorted bass and a lot of like like dark introspective lyrics and stuff like that and also under the context of this which makes this like such a powerful record to me as well is this is obviously the last record that he made before he overdosed i think in 2010 he was like struggling with opiate addiction and if you have that context and you go back and listen to this record, it's like such a dark place. And it really is like just hits you really hard. And I've had I have a list. There's four songs I've ever cried to in my entire life. And Smile by Idea and Abilities was like one of the songs that actually brought me to tears. And like it's it's a great, absolute great record. Spin Cycle, Burn Fetish, Junk, Smile. It's super interesting. There's not a rap album like it. And it's just like has such a heavy just such heaviness to it with the context of what happened afterwards. So that's my pick. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of idea and abilities, uh, oh. <laughs> but it's uh, if not, you know, go ahead, Lewis. Sorry. It sounds like a real positive record the way you just <clears throat> described it to get no, yourself it, it's, into a... it. It's very negative, but it's very good. Like the, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's like excellent. Uh, sure done. Yeah. So no, I've never heard it. No. All right. Well, yeah, if, if you haven't, like, definitely check it out. I don't I feel like uh, I don't know how much John or Dylan would be into it. I'm really not sure. But it's it's the rap rock, not like Limb Biscuit. So but let's uh, <laughs> let's get into uh, John's third pick here. All right. Well, there there it is. <laughs> I was going to say I was wondering if it was not, your third. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So again, this is uh, I'm doing records that I really liked at some point in my life. And uh, I'm going with Limp Biscuit, Significant Other. Uh, I like when this came out. Like, I couldn't believe how, uh, let's see, how good it was. I guess I'll say, like, I was absolutely obsessed with this album when it came out. Like, Limp Biscuit was my favorite band. I was this goofy, uh, early teen calling into TRL to request Nookie every single day after school. Um, 
those were that's that's what you did. You know, you just you grabbed the house phone and you called TRL over and over again and requested the song. And I I did it for this record. Um, I'm gonna look at the tracks really fast. I I doubt there's many that I didn't like at some point. It's got Nookie, Break Stuff, Rearranged. Um, oh, this doesn't have. I was gonna. I thought the um what is it mission impossible theme which is which was really cool is not on this one it's on the next one uh you got no sex there's a there's a lot of goofy tracks on here but it's still one of my like records i remember most most from my youth where i was listening to punk but i was still listening to a lot of new metal and stuff like that and yeah it's a, it was a landmark album for me as like cringy as it is now, I still I really like this album when it came out, and it's it's kind of decent now. I listen to it once in a while, mostly in jest, but it's still a good time. You haven't heard it's cool to unironically like Limp Bizkit again, though, along I, with uh, Creed and Nickelback. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I, mean, I mean Nickelback, like they have like a few good songs, but Limp the Limp Bizkit record is like legitimately like fucking awesome. Like it's a great time. I never even like. I know there was the period of time where everyone hated Limbiscuit. Like it, it came out. Like everyone was just hating on Limbiscuit. Uh, I don't know. I was never really a part of that. I don't really remember it too much. I think it was like a little bit past my time when I was listening. I think the, like the bands coming out, I was listening to in like middle school, like Papa Roach and Three Days Grace. Like I just missed like the Limbiscuit blow up. Um, but I remember revisiting this. I remember hearing break stuff. I had a couple of friends who was into it. And I was like, it's like, yo, this song goes fucking hard. <laughs> I was like, Damn. this song is awesome. As soon as that yeah. goes in, like yeah. it, it's super fun. It's a very hype album. It's like such a like great rap rock record. So this record's so much better than three dollar bill, y'all too. I mean Yeah, I, I think it is as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, that was like what I think impressed me the most because I felt like Three Dollar Bill was like fine, and of course, like everyone liked Faith, and that was the big hit. But yeah, this album was this album was fucking everywhere. Like this, like yeah, conquered. It was, yeah, this like yeah. was like super popular. Conquered like all the this. It was like Limp Biscuit versus like boy bands. Remember that yeah, the old yeah. era of music? So it's just funny. But so I think that's why it gets categorized as like a joke now. But like all this stuff comes back. People unironically like the Backstreet Boys. People unironically like Limp Biscuit now. So yeah. I always unironically like the Backstreet Boys and In Sync. I never got into O Town though. I hope uh Backstreet Boys make a show in on Dylan's list here. But uh, I mean, also like the they're great musicians. Like you know, the like the drummer I forget his name is John Otto. John it's like Otto, so yeah. Otto. It's and, such a great drummer. and West so, Bor- West Borland yeah. is crazy at guitar too. And and, and Sam the Rivers. Bass- I could see. I still know all the band yeah. members. <laughs> yeah, the, the rearranged bass line is yeah. like stuck it's stuck in my head around it. Do 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 do. It's so smooth. Like they're great musicians. And yeah, I mean, uh, Fred Durst lyrics obviously are like not like deep or introspectual yeah. or good at all they're no. very goofy and that's probably the only thing <clears throat> holding Limp Bizkit back but the energy behind it and all the the instruments are, are super good I think it's a solid record I think it's great I think so I think the silliness of their lyrics is why they were so big to be honest I think he was well, like I think some of to... it was <laughs> some of it like, you look back now it is like so corny it's like it's like I get there's a chung and cheek to it but i don't think it even holds up well but i think the music itself holds up really well but i think it's funny that like uh like de facto point of criticism of lyrics is they're not introspective when you're talking about music and I, I, i i mean i've done it myself but no i'm just thinking like who really likes introspect introspective lyrics like not not really i guess introspective is just one thing it's more of just like in like like well put together or thought out lyrics it really just seems like it's off the top of his head he's doing it which is fine to do i think it can work sometimes it's just there's nothing really there it's obviously just to turn your brain off and like rock out record so it does what it does but i mean like well there you have it elliot gives fred durst an f in english composition through lyricism (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So he gets an F, and uh, but it's an A for its purpose. It fits its purpose. But we talked about Limp Bizkit enough. Lewis, yeah. what's your favorite Limp Bizkit record at number three? My favorite Limp Bizkit. No, my third pick is actually staying with the whiny voiced indie rock genre, uh, and I am going with the Mountain Goats, the Sunset Tree. Uh, very similar band to the Week Events, to be honest. Not their entire catalog but uh this is a uh, i love the mountain goats at least a couple of their records sunset tree or tallahassee we're gonna be 
two that I, it was going to be one of those two for one of my picks. But man, the Sunset Tree is really good. Um, it's a another very depressing record. I've noticed that a lot of these ones are generally depressing. I guess that's a bad sign. But uh, Sunset Tree, uh, super. Uh, as far as I understand it, he wrote the whole um, the whole record about like his abusive relationship with his stepfather and then dealing with his death and all this stuff. And it's like, it definitely comes through as like a really earnest and uh, deep, I I guess here we go. We're talking about deep lyrics. Here we go. So the sunset tree seems to have a lot of introspection and a lot of stuff uh, going on lyrically that are really interesting. Um, Looking at the track list things. uh, I mean, like this whole album is really interesting, but it has a lot of variety too. Um, But yeah, I mean, if you guys never heard him, I would give him an honest try. If you can get past the vocals, once again, another whiny vocalist, but it's a, this is a banger of a record in my opinion. So that's my pick for three. I've never heard of them. Me neither. So I think you mentioned, didn't you mention them on the, the wives band tier list thing where they, didn't they show up the mountain goats as well? Or was that another band? It sounds like it would sound like the Mountain Goats. <laughs> I got to remember if I got to remember. No, because like, yeah, because Kate never really heard the Mountain Goats before I introduced her. So oh, I don't think okay. it was hers. So but she liked them. So I guess that's a good sign. She kind of said, too, she's like, well, it's a little whiny. <laughs> and then uh, and then I was like, come on. And she was like, all right, you're right. And uh, she gave it a second chance. But yeah, I mean, you know, if you could, if you want to listen to it, it's pretty interesting. Tallahassee, like I said, is another interesting record. Uh, they used a lot of those tracks on Moral Oral, if you've ever seen that show. Oh, yeah, uh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I love yeah that show. it was because yeah. especially the ones because like that album's a concept album about like a failing marriage. So a lot yeah. of those tracks were used in a lot of the scenes between the husband and wife and Clay yeah, and uh, yeah, Liberta. Sense. So good stuff. Uh, but yeah, interesting. So are you sure it wouldn't improve if the lyrics were "I did it all for the nookie, the nookie," so you can take that cookie? Stick it yeah, that head. you think that way. Yeah, that lyric good. is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I still that lyric still bothers me. I know it's so dumb, but yes, uh, I think you're uh, right. It could it could have added a little extra juice. So. Improved mountain goats, but Adila, what yeah. what's your number three here? Metallica and Justice for All, a much maligned album due to the creative direction they took with the Jason's bass. Uh, I think this is the best Metallica album, hands down. It's a good meeting point between, like, the Ride the Lightning, Kill Em All type Metallica, and then Master and Pu- Master of Puppets and the Black album. Uh, I think it's a fucking badass album. Uh, you got Blackened, maybe the best opener in thrash metal history right there. Uh, the title track, One. Probably the most commercially successful song off the record. Uh, Shortest Draw and then Dyer's Eve is a great closer. It's just a great oh, record yeah. to like just get fucking hammered and just like, <laughs> you know, just party, man. It's a badass I got, album. I got to know though, Dylan, uh, Metallica or Megadeth? Who's better here? Megadeth. Damn. Okay. That's crazy. I, I feel like a lot of people like Injustice Brawl. I feel yeah. like that's like the number. Is it is it the number? Two? I feel like it's number two after like Master of Puppets for most people. Is that? Oh, uh, I think the Black yeah, Album. Yeah, the Black Album is definitely the most popular. It's the most popular, but I feel like of like the Metallica like music nerd types, like most of them like play praise like uh, maybe not. I don't know, but I I remember listening to it. It's been a really long time, but yeah, I mean it, it's a great record from what I can remember. I like I like eighties Metallica especially. Yeah, Dylan's got a solid list so far going. I'll just never forgive Metallica for what they put out an album called Load just so they could put out an album called Reload. (laughs) Overhated records. One of them has a song called Fuel. I think I like love that song. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that much desire. It's a good song. (laughs) I don't know. What does he say? Uh, What's I can't remember. I don't remember what he says before the. What's the like? Ain't my bitch is on there. The, another hated Metallica album was the Garage one. It's re, it's real. I like that record a lot. Some of those covers that, kick ass. Oh, I was gonna say, isn't it a cover album or something? Uh, a, I think there's a long yeah. There's covers on it, but I think there's I think there may be some originals. There's like an extended one. But okay. I'm, I'm no is it Metallica like Saint, expert. Isn't Saint Anger the most hated one? Like, isn't that the yeah, one people yeah. always? Yeah, hate? That, that's, that's definitely Lulu. Lulu. Right Lulu. Wow. No, I feel like people hate Saint Anger more than Lulu. Even no, I don't know. Mm. It might be it might be hard competition. 
I was at like the nadir of their popularity too, because like everyone hated Lars Ulrich at that point. Yeah. So like it was just like let's shit on Metallica yeah. as much as possible. Killed Napster so. for us. He did. I just remember learning that some kind of monster riff on guitar when I was starting out. It was just dan and 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 the easiest shit to learn. So it was good. But all right, I'll go to uh, my fourth record here. If uh, let's see here, and so I've got at my number four spot, Cage the Elephant, Melophobia, and Lewis. I actually think you'd probably like this one. Um, this was my kind of diving into indie rock side quest uh, after like in the 2010s and stuff like that. And uh, Cage the Elephant, I think, is the best of this like garage rock revival stuff. Um, it, it's it's just like it's probably one of the most creative garage rock records. This is probably one of their more mellow and laid back ones. But I mean, to me, this is like peak like driving like just like driving on a trip music sun is setting and you've got melophobia playing in the background. And uh, I mean, there's like absolute bangers on it. You've got come a little closer, which is a radio hit. If you don't know who they are, maybe, you know, the one hit uh, ain't no rest for the wicked, which is played all over the place. It's like on borderlands, one right? One of their songs is on oh, borderlands. Yeah. I think maybe, uh, I think there is a song on borderlands. Yeah. So, that's, um, that's all I know yeah. About them. And it's all good. And Cigarette Daydreams is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Just like a really just like just mellow, just like trip and stuff like that. But it still has like a little bit of fun energy to it. So it's not like it's I would never call it boring, just mellow. It's mellow. It never gets boring. There's no like boring, slow songs. It just it keeps up that same kind of fun pace to the whole album. But it's definitely a more laid back album. But I love it. I think it's like a 10 out of 10 record. Um, and so anything on cage the elephant john knows them from borderlands and that's uh, anything. it, <laughs> and yeah. that's it. <laughs> you're muted i think your mic off you're muted sorry yeah i got the cats yowling in the background it's been a wild morning here guys i was up till 5 30 i got a cat with problems but uh yeah it's uh yeah i know the hits it's uh it's, yeah that's pretty good I, i'll probably give the rest of this album a listen though now Elliot, that you said it so yeah, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, like I'm not gonna be a hater yeah hell yeah uh, but uh, John, what's your number four pick here? All right, so I'm going back to the magical year of 1994, uh, most known for the uh, the punk revival. But I'm gonna stay with a band who was sticking with grunge at the time. Uh, we're going with Bush, Sixteen Stone, and yeah. uh, I I really like the follow up to Razorblade Suitcase. But I, I was looking at the track list on this, and when you talk about a like an album that's like almost all hits. We got everything Zen. We got little things. Come down. Machine Head. Glycerin. There may even be more, but off the top of my head, there's like five songs that were like on the radio constantly in the '90s. This is like, the, and this is their debut record. They're still like trying to like pick up where Nirvana left off. That, but like, I think they, I think they kind of just killed this record in in terms of like a, a stadium sound but also retaining some of like what made grunge kind of underground feeling and yeah bush 16 stone i this is like it it holds up 30 years later as like an all-time rock record so that that's going to be my pick here you think uh, this is like a better grunge record than nirvana like just in your personal obviously it's in your top five Ugh, i mean first- I, I wouldn't say it publicly but i will say it publicly right now yes i, I like this better than anything nirvana oh yeah. yeah yeah i agree i i don't think it's yeah this is way better <laughs> <laughs> all right lewis is taking even further no i mean come on even the sequencer records i mean you mentioned razor by Tukas, but even science of things even though it's like a bit different rules too like obviously he was getting influenced by like kind of the stuff coming up but oh it's got the yeah. chemicals I, between us is on that one yeah yeah that's a really yeah they, def- they were expanding their sound a little bit, but it can mean like, yeah, this is a raised by suitcase, like a swallowed too. Oh my God. Like Bush, yeah. Bush knew how to write a freaking song. And I mean, I remember that, I, that iconic, uh, performance where he was performing glycerin, like in the downpour and stuff. I don't oh, know if yeah, you remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like pretty sick. Good stuff. Oh yeah. 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 I- I've never heard it. So I'll have to check it out. So I'm a, a, a 90s grunge, like, uh, just it passed me by. New metal happened, and I listened to that and just never listened to 90s grunge. <laughs> so this is very commercial of... grunge. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's commercial. I'm yeah, glad. Yeah. I, want, I want the commercial grunge. I don't want no experimental nonsense. Just give me some straightforward tracks here. Uh, but Lewis, I do think your... it's, it's high okay, time I'm for a, for a grunge comeback. I can feel it. It's like kind of happened. It's coming, yeah. But, 
Yeah, so I got some. But, uh, I have some band. Well, well, we should do an episode like punk bands for grunge fans because I there's a couple that skirt the line that I've been listening to. Super Bloom is one that I'll yeah, just yeah. throw out there right now. Yeah. But yeah, we should do that. I one. was gonna say some. I couldn't remember who. That's one of the Epitaph bands, right? Yeah, teenage Risk. Risk. Okay, yeah, that risk. band. <laughs> I I could see a lot more bands like that. Coming yeah, up. like I say, mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's starting. It also did kind of have one like a little while ago, but it, it was kind of short lived. But um, Lewis, what what is your number four pick here? Yeah, we're going opposite of the dirty grunge of the mid ninety, early to mid nineties, and we are going with uh, early two thousands. Uh, one of the best pop rock records of all time with the Killers with Hot Fuss. Uh, nice. Yeah, Great. I mean, just like. Just, I think it's been on, uh, I think uh, Mr. Brightside has charted on the UK for eight years. Like, I yeah, think, yeah. like, totally. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, it's an absolutely insane stat. I just saw them pop up again because, uh, whatever, England won that soccer game. And they were showing the soccer game in the stadium while they were performing. And then as England wins the game, they kick into Mr. Brightside and like set off like confetti. It was, it must've been the most awesome, like live performance if you're into this shit. But I mean, hot fuss rules, dude, like half the album is singles. They're all good. Uh, looking at I mean, you know, we have obviously Mr. Brightside say it like you mean it, uh, all these things I've done. Like, I mean, every, Oh God, every song is good. I mean, if it's your vibe. So, um, just, you know, obviously a little over polished, but it kind of had like that retro feel with the uh, with the arena rock thing. So I love this record. I this always been like my guilty pleasure is to love this killer's record. So I guess I'm coming coming out <laughs> with it now. So any thoughts on Hot Fuss? When it when it comes to those like big commercial indie rock records to happen, I mean this is like one of the best ones. So you can't go wrong with it. I mean Mr. Brightside to this day still gets stuck in my head. It's an all time song, and the record's really good. I'm, so the, the Killers' Hot Fuss is a great choice. So, I've only yeah, heard Mr. The Mr. Brightside's insane. I need to listen to more from the record, but it, at yeah, least the whole the whole record's really good. You'll like it if you like. Mr. Basically, an inescapable song for a yeah. few years after it came out. It, I know. Every time I hear it, though, I'm never like groaning. No, fun. I'm always no, like, oh, I don't, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> no, it's I, I I've never gotten tired of that song. I know it's kind of weird how like uh, universal that song is. It just it stands the test of time. Still, I mean, John, do you like Mister Brightside at all? Not the really. Song? Not really. I'll, I'll go against your universal thing. I I don't really like Mister Brightside, and I yeah, I I don't know. I've never listened to the album though, so maybe there's a gem hidden on there for me. Probably not. But let's <laughs> move to <laughs> let's move to Dylan's number four album here. What do you got for it? What other dad band from the '80s do you have for us, Dylan? Uh, I don't. This is probably the Hell most yeah. punk adjacent album on here of anybody. We got Arthur. Watch the years crawl by. Uh, MXPX side project, but uh, more. I don't know if I would say indie rock, but like alternative, like softer, um, and like with a lot of Americana type themes throughout the album. But uh, yeah, just to really chill, like I associate this album with like winter time, like the one week out because it came out around Christmas, um, the one or two weeks out of the year in Florida where it gets below 70. I'll usually put this on. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic album and it's all the members of MXPX and then some other guy, his, that guy, Chris, who's playing guitar in the band now, maybe. No, it's some other guy. I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's an EP two from Arthur. I would like them to do another Arthur album. Remember, like t- to Tumble Down track. had some good tracks too. The Empty Bottle is it? I I don't know if I've listened to this in. When did this come out? Early two thousands. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Yeah, I may have never even listened to this. Honestly, I've definitely seen if, the cover. If I had to pick one song, it would be the the opening song, "Cold Outside." To so just listen to that. I think it'll sell you on the record. I feel like it's a punk record, not going to lie. I'm listening to it right now. I mean, it's definitely I'm a little bit more on the indie rock side, but it just sounds like a, a more indie-fied MXP. It sounds good, though. I actually really like the sound. So uh, I'll have to give this one a listen. It's a it's, nice it's, chill album. Yeah. Never heard it. Never heard it. 
Next. I never heard it. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> you know my deep, unabiding love for MXPX now, so maybe yeah, yeah. I will. You might like this one more. It's more. This is like MXPX game. does the weaker thins, but with uh, less uh, smart lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> less introspective lyrics. So, so more, just, more nookie MX cookie, <laughs> <laughs> more nookie cookie rhymes. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's get to the final one here, and my fifth album is going to be um, the Midnight kids is this is a 2018 record so th what this is it's like a modern take on like 80s synth pop and i just found myself like fucking absolutely loving this record it's like i don't know it, it's like an exploration of like the 80s fantasy like even the album cover is like this like fake 80s sci-fi by mall and stuff like that and like it starts off with like these commercials from the 80s talking about like the rise of computers and new technology and then it it goes into this like really just kind of like somber like ambient like stuff but then it picks up it's like a really cool record in the middle of it there's like commercials of like the video games and stuff like that it's like just a mix hodgepodge of a bunch of like different like 80s soundscapes and stuff like that and it, it's like a, it's like an 80s fantasy trip it's like what millennials our younger millennials and Gen Z people think the eighties is uh, in a record. So it's, it's, it's really cool. I actually own this one. I should have had it ready to pull out, but uh, I think it's an absolutely fantastic record. I've listened to it many times driving at midnight, listening to this album is like a vibe, get stoned, put this on and you got to listen to the full thing. I'm serious. Like, I mean, don't, don't get stoned. Uh, if you know, don't do drugs, but um, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like such a, it's like such a, just like trip. It really is like a trip to go go down. So that, that's my pick. The Midnight uh, Kids from 2018. Let me see if I can find this record. Never heard this album, but as someone who was born in the 80s, I see nothing inaccurate with that album cover. It is exactly yeah. as I remember it. Right, John? Yeah, yeah same, Elliot so. sent this to me a couple of weeks ago, and I put it on. It, it was interesting. You know my attention span. I got through about two and a half minutes, but it, it, was, it was fine. It, was, it definitely... Feels like it could be playing in like a Stranger Things or one of those like, yeah, pseudo. What do you call it? like those period piece nice. TV shows? Yeah. And so Sick. then the uh, the album uh, thing here, we got a nice fluorescent pink, which I think looks. Oh super yeah, pretty. yeah. That is the eighties color. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. So they did a good job. But uh, John, what's your next pick here? Number five. All right, Lewis, you and I can kind of tag team this because I was gonna go off of it and then. I kind of I was thinking like Eve Six, like one of those first two albums, but they're to me those are pretty much a pop punk album with some like alternative flair. And then Ellie just said the other one before I was gonna do um Papa Roach Infest, but I I really think, you know, and Lewis and I both pick spoiler alert, it's gonna be the third eye blind self titled from nineteen ninety seven. Like, I just, like, I couldn't go off of it. Like, it just starts so good. Like, losing a whole year, semi-charm life, jumper, graduate. How's it going to be? It's just it's just too good. And then when, once I saw Lewis picked it, I was like, whatever. You know, we're going to have the same pick. It is what it is. Uh, what, Lewis, what do you think? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, literally, like, I think three quarters of this album are singles almost, yeah. right? Like, I mean, it's this, this is a wall-to-wall -wall banger i mean who doesn't love jumper but i mean even beyond that like uh graduate like i think graduate was a single too actually yeah, like, but i don't think it was as big as the other ones but my god even like oh god looking at the motorcycle drive by is good i'm looking at the b-side now london uh burning man's awesome like all of these songs are good uh, especially the front side though i mean semi-charm kind of life is one of the best pop rock songs it might be the best pop rock song of all time. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sure there's opinions on that, but no, it, it is it's up there. It's another one of those like Mr. Brightside. Like I've never got tired of hearing that song. Like, ever. yeah, it's, it's, it's it just it drills into your ear and then you get to have your friends who go, you know, that song's about drugs and sex, right? When we were kids <laughs> and like, they're like, like they're, California for uh, Gen Xers. Now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but no, this album's incredible. So, I mean, you, you know, you'll still hear it for the years to come at almost every karaoke you go to. And I think that is a testament to it. So, yeah, it's it's a banger. No, it's super good. I love this record as well. So it's awesome. Jumper, obviously, such a catchy song as well. And I love the song Graduate on this one. I don't know if that one got mentioned. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. real quick, if you're looking for a modern take, a modern production take, uh, check out I Call Five's cover of How's It Gonna Be. It's it's they stay true to the original, but it just has like some more crisp production. It, 
And I think they did a really good job. But yeah, this it's an all time record for me too. Let's give a call out to Four Year Strong's cover of yeah, Semi Charm yeah. Life then too. I mean, even though it's like back in the punk genre, but that's a really good cover as yeah. well. It's a lot of fun. So and and a call out to Alex Melton who did the What If Blink One Eighty Two did Semi Charm Life and did a, a pretty accurate uh, representation of Tom and Mark's uh, voice. <laughs> in yeah, that one that guy rules. He does a that lot guy's of fun awesome. stuff. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. really talented. But Dylan, you anything to say on third time? Uh, uh, blind, my gosh, third eye blind. Time blind. Third time <laughs> third blind. blind. <laughs> you have any thoughts on three blind mice? Yeah. <laughs> and then you can take us home for your final pick. Uh, I I never listened to it. Maybe I've heard a few songs um, in popular media. Yep, you, you definitely have. Okay, Dawson's I'll pretty. take your word for it. Right. Um. I'm going to wrap us up with the most badass record anybody picked, Ace of Spades, by... What the hell is that? I that know. is not I, the album cover. I can only find the, the enhanced remaster. In, in, Where are you looking? In Google short, Images. In short notice, that's what I picked. It is what, what it is. What the fuck? <laughs> the album cover is part, it's the, one of the coolest <laughs> things about it, man. What the fuck? Hey, this, it's like a fancy coaster, man. It's fine. Yeah, some wood grain. Uh, no, this record's fucking insane. Uh, Ace of Spades, shoot you in the back, fast and loose. We are the road crew. Uh, bite the bullet, and uh, it's capped off with the hammer. And Lemmy is God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, sounds insane. When I picked this, I was like, he's gonna say something, so I used it anyway. But yeah. <laughs> Dang. What? Do what? Do you do you not have Google? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny no, I think he, 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 he uses the iTunes image searcher yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny I mean yeah Ace of Spades Ace of Spades is an awesome record there's nothing wrong with it dude that was so funny <laughs> it was so bad <laughs> I'm sorry it's still a... I will say I, mean, I, I would understand the original album cover is definitely bad I don't know what this is it literally looks like a, it's on the side of like a, a, a wooden crate yeah, it's selling bananas. Take it up with the band and record label, not me. That's the number well, one. I mean, Lemmy's dead, bro. I yeah. can't take it up with him. He must have approved this at some point, or probably take it up not, with his estate. <laughs> it's also crazy to me. I I never like. I remember finding out that this Motorhead record came out in 1980, and I'm like that. Like, kind of blows my mind. Like they've been around for so long, and it's like such a. I don't know. It's a sound that I didn't think got established until like. Yeah. the 1990s originally so like ahead of their time definitely so i i also want to say i think some people could consider this close to a punk record almost it's definitely. like yeah. rock and roll thrash metal a little bit of punk so i'm kind of skirting towing the line here a little bit yeah the first motorhead record came out in 1977 that's wild to me I felt like they were a 90s band when I first heard them, so it's always crazy to find that out. I think go. it's the Tony Hawk effect, because they kind of got a second, second Yeah, they put uh, from... Ace of Spades on there, and it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people people's... my age wouldn't have known uh, Motorhead without that, I feel no, like. No, I wouldn't have known Motorhead without Tony Hawk, so. But yeah, I love I love uh, Ace of Spades records. There you go. There's the proper. Yeah. They're standing on, like, a little berm on a beach, probably, for that photo shoot. <laughs> With like the coolest outfits, any, yeah, it looks awesome. Anybody has ever worn. <laughs> I, I could smell like, the what? sweat from here four years know. later. <laughs> the sweaty oh, yeah. leather. Oh, yeah, the crotch sweat is nasty in that thing. <laughs> I guarantee you. It looks pretty close to a YMCA album cover to me, but you know, whatever. A lot of leather going on. Yeah, it's like a it's like a BDSM western. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Good stuff though. Um, I agree. The Tony Hawk thing definitely came into play. Um, and you already did the line, Dylan, but I was going to ask you who could win in a wrestling match between Lemmy and God, but we already know the answer. The question. It's self-explanatory. Lemmy yeah, Lemmy is God. But, he yeah, really was like a, like a fucking cartoonish figure almost. Uh, didn't, he get, didn't he get oral sex while he was on stage performing? That's the urban legend. I don't know if it's true, but... I think you is, could uh, like say anything like that and it would be believable. I can already I'd, see just, just like frat dudes drinking beers being like, yo, Lemmy got his dick suck on stage. Lemmy is fucking God, bro. <laughs> we will, we will <laughs> chalk that one up either to be, we'll just believe that one. It's, I believe it. Snopes. Like I believe, yeah, I believe uh, Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off the bat. 
it did. Everything happened. He murdered chickens, and Lemmy got head. So that's these are the core tenets of my belief structure. But he got yeah, he got, he got, he got Motorhead. <laughs> motorhead, yeah. <laughs> So, well, yeah, I guess we'll just wrap this uh, up here. We've we've got all of our records. So this is what uh, all of us, all of us punkers listen to. That's not punk music. This, I hope you if you're still here, that's incredible. All five of you that made it to the very end of this. Um, so don't forget to check out uh, punkrockradar.limitedrun.com to support the channel. There's tons of records. We've got merchandise. John is coming out with a new hoodie, which looks super dope. It has Green Day, kind of a Green Day insignia on the back and like a Pennywise About Time logo on the front. Uh, the pre-order is up. You get a free shirt with it, I believe. Is that correct, John? Yes, sir. That's right. And uh, obviously, the comment down below. Like the channel. Share with your friends. Uh, help us grow the channel and we can do uh we'll all eventually become full-time youtubers and lewis can quit his job which is getting in the way of us of us recording so listen guys i not very often have to work overnight it happened like once i apologize You're if you're still watching comment your favorite non-punk albums yes that's a good rather <laughs> than hating on me uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we can also, yeah, that's a better way to do it than hating on Louis. I wasn't hating. I'll leave a comment. Okay. So positivity. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Uh, We're out. Bye. Peace.